Hey folks, happy Wednesday. Graham Brown here, Lifestyle Entrepreneur Podcast. Going to be talking about these five books. The five books that, well, help me escape the rat race and retire at 40. The five books that can help you become creatively and financially free because it's all about taking on board the knowledge from these authors. You know, different books, different applications, but all books that you should definitely read. And I want to share with you in the next 10 minutes how I believe these books are worth many, many times over their value. If you think about it, I mean, 10, $15, 10 or $15, five, 10 pounds, 10 pounds, whatever it is, 15 euros in your country, a thousand yen. If you think about it, that can change your life. I mean, where else can you get that kind of return? On investment. It's amazing, really. Even in this world of digital and analog, I'm still bullish on books. I still believe books are the way forward. And you know what? I buy the traditional paperbacks. I've got them here sitting on my desk right now as I talk to you. Paper, paper books. I mean, you know, I've done the Kindle thing. I've done the ebook thing. I've done the, I've done all that. But, you know, it comes back to paper books because there's something about having that book and just having it on your desk. I mean, what do you think? Are you a paper book person or you're a digital person? I had Kindle and the problem with the Kindle, I end up with about, I don't know, I had about 100 books in it in the end. And it just became like work because I looked at every single one of these books and thought, oh, God, I've got to read these now. Whereas with these paper books, they just kind of sit around the house whether it's on my desk or living room table or by the bed, and I can just kind of pick them up. So that's why I love books. I mean, I love books in that paper format, but I don't think it's important. It's not important whether you're a paper or a digital person. The point is, is that you read. Somebody told me a while ago that they don't need to read books because they can get everything online. I don't believe it. You know, there's a million people out there writing books for everyone that actually writes a book. And there's a reason for that is actually getting the book done and dusted is hard work. It's hard to publish a book. So, you know, if you think you can get this information out there online, you're wrong. You have to actually go and get the book because it takes a lot of work to actually get all that information, all that content and put it into a book and make it happen, right? As a product. So books, yes, we're going to talk about books, those five books. What are the five books that help me become creatively and financially free. And these are the five books that I believe everybody should read. And if you read them, let me know. You can tweet me at Graham D. Brown. Information will come up in a minute. Or you can hit like, comment, direct message. So many ways to do it these days. You know how it goes. You know the drill. So let's have a look at those five books. What are the five books that every entrepreneur, every lifestyle entrepreneur must read? What are the five books that will have a massive return on investment? If you think about it, $10, $15 on one of these books. Um, how that could impact your life, it's just phenomenal, really. And the time as well. I mean, if you spent a few hours reading a book, the impact that that could have on your life is profound, really, compared to anything else. I don't think there is any other kind of return on investment that you can get as you can get in a book, even in this digital age. So here, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the five books. What are the five books that I recommend? The books that I've read and that had a big impact on my life. Let's just quickly run through those books and then I'll skim through and just give you the key lesson from each one of those books that you can take away right here, right now, in the next 10 minutes. Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Seven Day Startup by Dan Norris. The Hundred Dollar Startup by Chris Guillebeau. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Let's have a look at each one of those. Where to start? I mean, pff, blimey. Where do you start with these books? Because just one of these books on their own is, well, I mean, you know, the value that could have in transforming your life is just phenomenal, really. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm overestimating, but I don't think you can overestimate the power of these books. So let's start at the top. The 4-Hour Workweek. So let's rewind back. The 4-Hour Workweek was published, what, 10 years ago? Before the 4-Hour Workweek, there wasn't really an option. If you were a lifestyle entrepreneur, you either did the startup thing 
or you did the drive around the countryside in your Volkswagen camper van thing, which was the anti-ambition thing. You either did the ambition thing or the anti-ambition thing. So there really wasn't an option, a third way for us lifestyle entrepreneurs who wanted to enjoy our lives and grow businesses because we were ambitious. But the four hour work week came along and changed all that. The four hour work week is not about working four hours a week. That's a big misconception. But that's the power of the title. People sort of jump in and think, oh, this is about outsourcing your life and doing nothing. No, it's not. Because even Tim Ferriss would confess that he probably works as hard as everybody else. Tim Ferriss, the author, four hours a week. There's no point working four hours a week. I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, why do you want to work four hours a week? So the key lesson, the takeaway there is not about working four hours a week. It's about designing your life so you can work on your own terms. It's about redefining retirement as well. Retirement is not freedom from work. It's freedom from the need to work, right? So that's the four-hour work week. Moving on. The $100 Startup. I think this is probably the most recent of all the books. The $100 Startup by Chris Guillebeau. Interesting thing about Chris Guillebeau is he traveled the world. I think he went to every single country in the world. I mean, that's quite an achievement, really. I don't know how many countries there are in the world, but he went to every single one. And he documented his journey in his blog, The Art of Nonconformity. And as a part of traveling the world, one thing he discovered was what he calls the accidental entrepreneurs, which is what I call the lifestyle entrepreneurs. So these are the people who went into business, not because they wanted to make a shit ton of money, but they went into business because they wanted to fix a problem and solve a problem that people like themselves are having on an everyday basis. So one of the key lessons in the $100 startup, and I talk about this more in my free course, if you want to go and check it out, is that one of the big mistakes that entrepreneurs make when starting a business is they try and focus on innovation, which is a trap, really. They try and do the innovation thing, whether that's be, you know, let's be the next Mark Zuckerberg, let's be the next Facebook, the next billion dollar app. Whereas you can be very successful, make a lot of money by not being innovative, by simply being useful. So if you want to know a bit more about usefulness, then look at what are the frustrations that people face on an everyday basis and fix them, right? You know, you don't have to have the next billion dollar app. You can just create something quite simple. And that provides a a very powerful base for a business. So I talk about that a bit more in depth in the free course and also have a a premium course. If you're interested in these books, I go deeper into each and every one of them. And for an hour, I basically pull out all the key lessons from these books. The $100 Startup, Chris Guillebeau, Seven Day Startup by Dan Norris. This is the shortest of the book. It's much more of a manual than a life guide. Interesting thing about the Seven Day Startup is the title itself challenges you how can you start a business in seven days? Well, the, the reality is that you can if you do it differently. The mistake that most entrepreneurs make when it comes to launching a business is they take weeks and months. If you're taking weeks or months, years to launch a business, you're taking a massive risk. You don't need to write a business plan. You don't need to get a logo. You don't need to get a website. Screw all of that and just launch. So the seven-day startup is about focusing on what you need to focus on as an entrepreneur. And it's a very powerful lesson because the problem, the challenge, I suppose, I should say, facing us entrepreneurs is that we get drawn into doing the activities that are comfortable as opposed to the activities that bring customers. What do I mean by that? Well, Dan Norris calls this the entrepreneur versus the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is somebody who does what they feel comfortable doing. So these are the things that they are in control of, like, for example, designing logos, designing websites, coding, that kind of thing. But if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur, you've got to get out and you've got to hustle. You've got to do the uncomfortable things. This goes back to Tim Ferriss's four hour work week, which basically says, you know, if you want to be successful, your success is a direct function of your ability to have uncomfortable conversations. And the seven day startup is all about that. It's basically saying your success as a startup is your ability to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Get out from behind the computer scene, off your ass, and go and hustle. So the seventh day startup is a powerful lesson in hustle, and it reminds us not to get stuck in our comfort zone. And I think it's one of the best lessons. 
simple lessons for startups because you know I'm involved with a lot of startups and I see this problem time and time again people say to me oh I want to design beautiful code it's bullshit get out and hustle talk to customers book number four seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey you know what habits may not be particularly cool these days but this book is probably the book that started it all for me I mean I started reading these kind of self-development books 20 years ago and the seven habits of highly effective people started with and I can remember very very clearly the first habit by Stephen Covey is begin with the end in mind and that taught me such a powerful lesson and I think because of that lesson everything else followed through in my life which was basically look visualize what it is you want to achieve in your life and start with that end in mind and then work towards that end. That's your North Star. So if you're an entrepreneur, a lifestyle entrepreneur like myself, define the lifestyle that you want and then start building out the path to achieve that lifestyle. If you don't define it, you won't get it. You end up getting battered around and pushed around by other people's agendas. So... That one lesson alone, you could read that one page in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and get enough value out of it that you probably didn't need to read the, the rest of the book. But that alone, wow, isn't that powerful? So for me, that one lesson alone is you know, worth many times over the value of that book. And I recommend The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People to everybody. It does get a little bit weighty, the book, I have to say, but simply reading the seven habits and skimming through it and understanding what those habits are and how they work with each other is a very powerful lesson because, you know, success isn't about motivation. Success isn't about necessarily having massive goals. Success is about what you do every day on a daily basis. It's done in the small picture. So that's the seven habits of highly effective people. And that really is the platform for all of these books, I think, to build on. And so let's finish up with probably the, the, one of the most important books, especially for lifestyle entrepreneurs, especially for location independent entrepreneurs, especially for solopreneurs and digital nomads and freelancers. Because this is a book that teaches the most powerful lesson that everybody misses out on. And that is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And this is something I want to talk a bit more about in future broadcasts and future podcasts and lives on Facebook and so on. And that is the digital nomad trap. And I want people to take this on board. This digital nomad trap is basically the problem, the challenge that most digital nomads take on board or freelancers or location independent entrepreneurs is that they build businesses, but they don't build any kind of assets or wealth generation for themselves. So the focus of a digital nomad or a location independent entrepreneur is to build a business and travel the world, right? But the problem with that model is they end up traveling the world. They end up surrounding themselves with people who think the same. They end up earning coconut dollars. And then they get trapped because they've significantly reduced their lifestyle expenses. And they're probably earning less than what they were earning back home. And as a result of that, they can't move back because they haven't generated any kind of assets, any kind of passive income. All they have done is just created an active income and reduced their living expenses. So that is the digital nomad trap. They end up in a place like Thailand and they can't move out. Or if they decide to move out, they have to kind of like throw in the towel and say, hey, this is a big failure and go home. Whereas what you need to be doing, and this is what Robert Kiyosaki teaches in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is you need to take the cash flow from any business that you have. And this is my model. This worked for me. It takes seven to 10 years. But the end result of this is that you can become financially and creatively free. Build a business, a lifestyle business that generates cash. Take the cash from the lifestyle business and put it into an investment business. An investment business buys assets, ideally real estate, that make money while you sleep. Focus on, focus less on the value of the asset 
and more on the income that that asset produces. So people say to me, oh, you're in a real estate in my country. It's going down in value. Doesn't matter. That's how amateurs think about real estate, right? And if you read Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you'll understand that it's not about the value of the asset. It's about the income that that asset can produce. Because if you buy a property, if you buy real estate and you let it out to somebody, it generates income and you make money while you're asleep. That is the only way that you can become financially and creatively free long term. And this is the big mistake that most digital nomads and location independent entrepreneurs are making. Because all they're doing is building online businesses and they're forgetting that those businesses will never make them become financially and creatively free. The only way to do that is by buying into assets. So whilst you have an online business producing cash, whilst you have low overheads and you're living somewhere like Chiang Mai or you're living in Bali or whatever, and even if you're producing $100 in spare cash a month, rather than spend that on the luxuries of living cheap, Start saving that up and then start investing that into assets because that is what will set you free in the future. If you don't, you're going to end up trapped as a digital nomad forever reliant on living in cheap places in the world because you can never generate more to escape. That's the digital nomad trap. And I see people now, now that we have several years of people who are going out and doing this location independent thing, we're now starting to see people with case study experience who, who are going out and doing these things, going out and building these businesses, and now are getting trapped as a result of doing it. Because back home, even though people were living expensive lifestyles, people were thinking about things like retirement and things like you know investment in assets and so on. But you know, throw yourself out there into the jungle or somewhere in Southeast Asia, those things don't necessarily come to the top of your mind. But you know, you live in the moment. But as is always the case, right? You know, if you had started this 10 years ago, you would have an asset portfolio now that could enable you to live anywhere in the world, whether that be New York City or Chiang Mai, right? So those are the five books. Hopefully, some useful lessons there. Just a quick broadcast today. Hopefully, you're listening to this either on Facebook or you're listening on iTunes or you're listening on my website grahamdbrown.com if you want to go and find out more about these courses what i recommend is you go and check out grahamdbrown.com slash free you can get my free course it's about 30 minutes where basically i just share with you the key messages from these five books and how these five books really i suppose are the building blocks of my financial and creative freedom and in 30 minutes if you can learn something from that wow that's amazing return on investment i'm giving to you all of that for free so enjoy it Tweet me, Graham D. Brown. You can direct message me, Facebook, email if you're on my newsletter. And I look forward to seeing you soon at a future Lifestyle Entrepreneur podcast, either here on Facebook or on